It's Thursday, February 6. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Carol Francis. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has outlined a raft of measures to prevent the entry and spread of the coronavirus in Jamaica. 13 people are reportedly in quarantine, one in isolation. Dr. Tufton says the isolated patient does not meet the case definition for the coronavirus. The respiratory virus first detected in the Chinese city of Wuhan has spread outside of China. 25 countries have confirmed a total of 191 cases. At a press conference on Wednesday, Dr. Tufton unveiled plans for the establishment of a national coordinating mechanism to combat the spread of the virus in Jamaica. We have more in this report from Simone Absalom. The health ministry is moving swiftly to prepare Jamaica against the coronavirus outbreak. Among the measures is the establishment of a national coordinating team. So the cabinet has instructed in the first instance that a national coordinating mechanism be established and the Ministry of Health and Wellness will be liaising with the various partners to see to its establishment. Um, normally when you have threats of this type, um, there is, it is better to create a, a national coordination which involves multiple stakeholders, multiple ministries, um, most, uh, more often than not, um, it, it is led by ADPEM, and that, of course, is, resides in the, in, the, in the Prime Minister's portfolio. In addition to the usual port, health and immigration rules and procedures for aircraft and sea craft, restrictions on persons traveling from China to Jamaica have been implemented. The measures include the screening of travelers from China and urging people to postpone trips. Only Jamaican nationals, permanent residents, and those with marriage exemption will be granted landing privileges. All travelers will be subject to immediate quarantine and for a minimum of 14 days. And travelers who show any symptoms of the novel coronavirus will be put in immediate isolation. So um, just to say that it is not that we won't accept persons coming from China, but there are elevated restrictions on those persons coming from China. Clearly, our nationals cannot be disallowed, if you will, from coming to their home, from their, to their country. And so Jamaicans will always be accepted, but they would be restricted in terms of their movement once they come in to the quarantine period. According to Dr. Tofton, each traveler from China will be assessed to determine the type of quarantine arrangement to be applied. The evaluation will be done in part with a special risk assessment tool. Those determined to be high risk will be quarantined in a government facility. Those determined to be low risk will be quarantined at home. And those quarantined at home will be followed up daily by healthcare teams at the parish level. Dr. Tofton warned against wearing medical masks. Wearing of medical masks, by the way, I'm told by the medical folks, is not recommended except for those persons who will be in close contact to symptomatic individuals. In fact, it may create a false sense of security that can lead to neglecting other essential measures such as proper hand hygiene. And again, the coronavirus causes severe acute respiratory infection and symptoms usually start with a fever followed by a dry cough. Most people are likely to fully recover, just as they would the flu. For the news on PBCJ, I am Simone Absalom. Jamaicans are being urged to get their flu vaccines. And that the flu really can affect everyone and anybody um, in any age group. Over children, persons with chronic illnesses, pregnant women and the elderly are at high risk for complications from the flu and these complications include pneumonia and blood infections. They're also reminded to practice good hygiene, including washing hands with soap and water and covering the mouth and nose while coughing or sneezing. These hygiene practices are also important for the prevention of the spread of the coronavirus. And Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton is cautioning Jamaicans not to lose sight of the threat posed by dengue. Recently, we added 60 new 
motor vehicles valued at some $400 million to our fleet for the National Vector Control Program, 37 of them equipped with mounted foggers. And of course, we had our national dengue cleanup. And so far, we are pleased with the response to this additional effort and infrastructure that we have placed in the vector, uh, national vector program. Uh, we have actually renewed the entire fleet of the vector program. Uh, so, I mean, these vehicles would be serving every single parish and the mounted foggers that are significantly more efficient than the handheld ones. They cover a lot more communities, a lot safer to operate in terms of the workers. Um, they are new vehicles, so we should have no downtime. So we expect that certainly as it relates to addressing the mature mosquito threat, because that's what the fogging does. It kills the mature mosquitoes flying around. Uh, the country is well equipped to, to address in a more efficient way that particular threat, and we hope to see the results of that over time. A baby in China's epidemic hit Wuhan city has reportedly been diagnosed with the coronavirus just 30 hours after being born. According to Chinese state media, the infant is the youngest person recorded as being infected by the virus since it emerged late last year. CCTV quoted experts as saying it may be a case of vertical transmission, referring to infections passed from mother to child during pregnancy, childbirth, or immediately after. The mother had reportedly tested positive for the virus before giving birth. 30 youngsters from Kingston have been selected to participate in the Heart Trust NTA and Transport Ministry's driver training program. These sessions are slated to begin on February 12. The participants will get 25 one-hour lessons for the next two months. The lessons will include defensive driving and public passenger safety. Speaking at the launch of the program, Transport Minister Robert Montague said it would reform the transport sector. Over time, we will have a pool of certified professional transport agents who will be able to safely carry your children and yourself about your business as you take, whether the bus or the taxi. We have to be more professional as we look at this industry. The Transport Authority and the Island Traffic Authority, ITA, have opened a satellite office and a retrofitted examination depot on Barracks Road in Savlamar, Westmoreland. In its bid to improve customer service and provide the public with greater access, it has partnered with the ITA to establish a one-stop shop for testing and licensing of public passenger vehicles and commercial carriers. The Savlamar Satellite Office is one of three such facilities established to extend the reach of the authority's services to the parish of Westmoreland. Restorative Justice Week is being observed from February 2 to 7 under the theme Supporting Peace and Unity in Our Community. Among the activities planned are a peace walk, youth forum, and island-wide sensitization sessions. Restorative Justice Program Coordinator Andreen Lindsay says the aim is to heighten awareness about the process. The week's activities culminates with the Restorative Justice facilitators, facilitators graduation today, February 6. Registration is now open for the seventh regional platform for disaster risk reduction in the Americas and the Caribbean. The event is slated for July 7 to 10 in Montego Bay, St. James, under the theme building resilient economies in the Americas and the Caribbean. Registration is scheduled to close a month ahead of the meeting. Interested parties are encouraged to, to register early. The framework, which is the first major agreement of the United Nations post-2015 development agenda, details seven targets and four priorities for action. Applications have already been received from interests in the Caribbean, Latin, and Central America. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced a March 2 by-election for Clarendon Southeastern following the resignation of Member of Parliament Rudyard Spencer in the House of Representatives. Nominations will be on Wednesday, February 12. The governing Jamaica Labour Party said it was making the necessary preparations to nominate its candidate for the impending by-election to replace Mr. Spencer, despite an announcement from the opposition 
People's National Party that it would not be contesting the election. Reggae superstar Robert Nesta Marley, more popularly known as Bob Marley, would have been 75 this year if he was alive. Today, February 6, music lovers are celebrating the birthday of the reggae superstar. Accepted worldwide as the king of reggae, Bob Marley, throughout his short-lived career, also made a lasting impact on Jamaica's political landscape through his music. In this report, Marlon Samuels take a brief look at the impact of Bob Marley's music on Jamaica's political landscape. Bob Marley using reggae as a vehicle of social protest and commentary, song of the need for equality and peace. He also used his music to diffuse escalating political tensions. In 1976, he agreed to perform at a concert called Smile Jamaica on December 3, 1976. Two days before the Smile Jamaica concert, gunmen invade his home. Entertainer and reggae star Bob Marley, Rita Marley and the manager of the Whalers Don Taylor are now patients in the University Hospital after receiving gunshot wounds during a shooting incident which took place at Marley's home at 56 Hope Road. Despite his injuries, Bob Marley performed at the Smile Jamaica concert, which was held days before the general elections, right after he left the island. He returned to Jamaica in 1978 to perform at another event designed to again diffuse political tensions. The event, called the One Love Peace Concert, was a powerful one for political unity and peace. Bob Marley took the hand of then Prime Minister Michael Manley and the hand of then opposition leader Edward Siaga and joined them in a show of unity and peace. He died May 11, 1981 at the age of 36 and was accorded a state funeral. As the cortege traveled from the National Arena, many Jamaicans lined the streets. The procession wended its way through the streets of Kingston before traveling slowly through Spanish Town. All along the route, people came out of homes and business establishments to line the streets. Others abandoned their daily chores to secure vantage points to get a glimpse of the funeral procession, which made its way over Flat Bridge onto his final resting place in Nine Miles, St. Anne, the village where he was born. Bob Marley died from cancer 39 years ago, yet one can still see the intricate weaving of his music on politics in the rallying cries of people fighting for freedom and equality all over the world. His music also encourages listeners to emancipate themselves from mental slavery. Reporting for the news on PBCJ, I'm Marlon Samuels. In this week's Culinary Trails, our reporter Simone Absalom is checking out the vendors in the vicinity of Ward Theatre in downtown Kingston. on Culinary Trails, we're hanging out in downtown Kingston, right by the Ward Theatre. And I'm feeling like having some refreshments, maybe a sky juice or maybe some fruits. The Ward Theatre has been around since 1912, a gift from then Costas of Kingston, Colonel Charles Ward. It has gotten run down over the years, but it's being renovated. Time now for some fruits. Oh, about 30 years now selling it. So I don't know if I'm not a parent to send me to school. I just do business for it and them things. You see me I say? You can get every little thing. Grape, melon, papa, apple, banana. You see melon and pine and them things there. Anything I have you can get. You think you're going to increase sales when if them fix the water theater and get more shows going on? Uh, I, I, them say, you know, we just there and see what I'm learning and see what I go on.
if you're downtown and you feel like you want something refreshing, you can come and check out this spot right here. Tony, he's right nearby the Ward Theatre. You can check him out and taste some of his delicious sky juice. Well, my name is Goldust, you know, otherwise known as Yellow, the potty man in the street. Whether it rain or fall or the sun or shine, we have to look the money. We have to look the money because we don't have to rub our teeth. We prefer to come hustle the potty in the street. Otherwise, you have some money that sit down and rub out the man Miguel and send out now. Go on. But otherwise, we have to come around and look it because you have to go to school, you know. For those of us who are at home sitting and thinking about starting a business like this, how do they go about doing it? What's the first thing you do? Well, you got to get a food and glass permit. Because when you check the race, you know, people look how you care yourself, you know. If your fingernail is not clean, you know, in a sense, you sell people because people just have to deal with their way in the street. So you have to care yourself straight up in the street. If you're clean, you're clean. If you're dirty, you're dirty. Well, and everybody can start this business as simple as you see it, you know, because it's rough. When party get cold, what are you going to do with it? So you have to quick and fast in the high street for start this business. And motorists should see a decrease at the pumps in the prices of gasoline and diesel effective today based on the latest extra fine costs from Petrojam. 87 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $121.70 and $124.54 per litre, respectively, down by 5 cents each. Automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $127.11 per litre, following a decrease of $2.78. Ultra-low sulfur is down by $2.87 and will be sold for $130.50. 57 cents per liter. Meanwhile, kerosene decreased in price by $3 and will be sold for $103.19 per liter. Propane liquid petroleum will be sold for $38.52 per liter, up by $2.97. And butane liquid petroleum will be sold for $50.01 per liter after a decrease of $0.03. Cents. Marketing companies and retailers will add their respective markup to these prices. The U.S. dollar on Wednesday, February 5, ended trading at $141.80, up by 27 cents. That's according to the Bank of Jamaica's daily exchange trading summary. Meanwhile, the Canadian dollar ended trading at $107.13, down from $107.40, while the British pound sterling ended trading at $183.49, up from $182.52. In regional news, the much-touted Dragon gas deal has been called off. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley broke the news as he addressed the TNT Energy Conference in Port of Spain. But as Crystal Wilson tells us, the U.S. sanctions on Venezuela has negatively impacted the deal. The U.S. sanctions against Venezuela has put a halt to the Dragon gas deal. It is regrettable that we cannot now move ahead with the Dragon project which is on hold at this time due to the U.S. sanctions on Venezuela. At a moment's notice, we are ready to move ahead with the project and the lifting of such restrictions since virtually all the preparatory work has been done. Notwithstanding, we are proceeding with the Manity Initiative, which is the single most significant development in the energy sector in recent times. The across-border Lauren Manatee field has an estimated 10.04 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, with 75% in Venezuela and 25 in Trinidad and Tobago. 2.712 trillion cubic feet of that natural gas is in the Manatee field in Trinidad and Tobago, and Shell has projected that gas production could start within the next four to five years. Gas production is projected to come on stream from Manatee field, which forms part of the Loran Manatee cross-border field and is located in the marine area of Trinidad and Tobago. Dr. Rowley also said oil and gas production is increasing, with oil and gas approaching levels experienced 10 years ago. He added the key to sustainability is continued exploration by upstream companies. The government of Trinidad and Tobago has for the last two years 
open and encourage discussions among all the stakeholders in the LNG business with the aim of protecting the future of the industry for all investors in it, not the least of whom are the people of Trinidad and Tobago. The Prime Minister was the keynote speaker at the Trinidad and Tobago Energy Conference. There, he also said that subsidiary companies of Petrotrin, Heritage Petroleum and Paria Fuel Trading Company have recorded close to a billion dollars in profits. Crystal Wilson, TTT News. A Guyanese medical student that returned to the island on Wednesday from China via Suriname has been placed in quarantine. We get the details in this News Source Guyana report. A Guyanese medical student who returned from China via Suriname last night created mayhem at the Diamond Hospital after she was taken there from the Chedi Jagan Airport to undergo an evaluation and additional screening as part of the protocol to deal with the coronavirus. News source understands that a medical student and her relatives hurled insults at the medical team on duty as the young woman feared being placed in quarantine. She reportedly showed no signs of the virus, but the medical team carried out the various protocols that are in place. The woman was allowed to leave the hospital and is likely to be monitored at home. The Diamond Hospital and the Georgetown Hospital are the two identified medical sites in Guyana being used for screening and monitoring of suspected cases. When contacted today, the Director for Regional Health Services, Dr. K. Shaco, referred all queries to the Chief Medical Officer. The Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sham Dio Persad, told News Source that he has not received any report of any incident at the Diamond Hospital, although he admitted that the passenger who arrived last evening would have had to undergo some screening. He revealed that there are nine persons who are currently on the home monitoring after they arrived in Guyana from China. Those persons would have had to in transit in other countries before reaching Guyana. Dr. Passat explained that once someone arrives and is screened at the airport and shows no signs of the virus, their information will be taken and they will be monitored at home. He said although there are nine persons currently on the home monitoring, they are not considered suspects for the coronavirus. He said there are no suspects for the virus in Guyana and further explained that strict guidelines are being followed in keeping with advice from the World Health Organization. Dr. Passat said among those being monitored are Guyanese students who have opted to return to Guyana from China following the outbreak of the coronavirus there. There are a number of Guyanese scholars studying in China. The government has made a decision that it is best for them to remain in China and follow the medical advice of the Chinese government as they address the outbreak of the coronavirus. Guyana has closed down its embassy in China as the country remains fearful of the further spreading of the virus that has claimed close to 500 lives with more than 2,000 persons being hospitalized in China. While many airlines that fly between the US and China and the UK and China have scaled down those flights, many others are still operating. Some medical professionals are calling on the government of Guyana to release more detailed information concerning the restrictions on travel from China and the quarantining of persons who may be returning from China in Guyana, even though they may not show signs of the coronavirus. The Ministry of Public Health has since launched a public relations campaign to raise more awareness on the coronavirus. And staying in Guyana, the Guyana Elections Commission, GCOM, says that plans are well advanced for the March 2 general elections. This comes more than a year after the main opposition People's Progressive Party successfully tabled a motion of no confidence in the coalition government of President David Granger. We get more in this report from news source Guyana's Gordon Mosley. The Guyana Elections Commission has indicated that its preparations for the upcoming elections are well advanced. The ballots will be arriving in the country tomorrow, and the Commission has already identified more than 2,000 polling stations that will be used for the elections. Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield. As it relates to A, the establishment of our offices, the ROs, the DROs, we're moving towards the appointment of staff that are required. We have engaged the police in establishing ballot stations. Our ballots will be here on Thursday the 7th. And all the concomitant activities relative to the arrival of ballots, we'll be treating with those. So as far as our arrangements go, we are um, at a safe place. Polling stations, private um, stations, We have 2,352 polling stations. Inclusive of 
inclusive of um, private residences. The final voters list has already been published on the GCOM website and will be posted across the country soon. Voters are being encouraged to check the list. Meanwhile, more observers have started to arrive in the country. Officials from the Carter Center of the U.S. are in Guyana with an advanced team and have been meeting government and opposition officials and will be meeting the political parties soon. Today, the officials met with the Director General of the Ministry of the Presidency, Joe Harmon. In sports, we kick off with football. Jamaica Football Federation's General Secretary Dalton Wint says his association is counting on the experience of newly appointed head coach Xavier Gilbert to lead the national under-20 women's team to a historic berth at the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. The under-20 reggae girls are scheduled to compete in the final round of CONCACAF qualifiers, which will be held in the Dominican Republic from February 22 to March 8. Gilbert, who has had success with the under-20 team in the past, having led them to a Caribbean championship title on home soil in 2014, has replaced former coach Lorne Donaldson. Former national player Tashan Vincent has been appointed as Gilbert's assistant. And that's our package. Join us again tomorrow, same place, same time, for more news and sports right here on PBCJ, the People's Station.